Hi, so this is my presentation on knot theory. Since Shreya and I chose the same topic, I'm going to focus more on the introduction to knot theory and she's going to focus more on its applications. So what exactly is knot theory? It's actually a subset of topology and like the name implies, it's the study of mathematical knots. While this field of study was inspired by real life, from the knots you use to tie your shoes to the knots you use to sail a boat, a mathematical knot is actually slightly different than what you would normally think of. A mathematical knot's ends are fused together, so it cannot be untied. You can see this in the knots from the image on the right of the screen. All of those are considered mathematical knots. So here's a short historical background of knot theory. People's interest in knots began in prehistoric times. Archaeologists have found that knots were used for not only tying things together, but also for recording information like in the Incan quipus and for aesthetics and spiritual symbolism, like in the Chinese and Celtic cultures. In 1771, Alexander Theophile Vandermond started studying knots in the context of topology and basic geometry, and during the 19th century, Gauss began studying the linking variable, which is the numerical invariant that describes the linking of two closed curves in a 3D space, and many other topologists of the time became interested in learning about knot invariants and knot equivalents. From the 20th century on, mathematicians have been studying physical knots and their applications to the knotting phenomenon in DNA and polymers, so it's recently been more linked to biological studies. Here I've listed some important vocabulary terms concerning knot theory. A knot is an embedding of a topological circle S1 in a 3D Euclidean space R3. An unknot or ring or trivial knot, which are all the same thing, is a closed loop of rope without a knot tied into it. A crossing number is the minimal number of crossings in any diagram of a knot. Knot equivalence is when two knots should be considered the same even when positioned quite differently in space. Reitermeister moves are any of three local moves on a link diagram. And prime knots are non-trivial knots that are indecomposable. So don't worry if you're not quite grasping these concepts yet. They're pretty hard to visualize. We're going to go over them more in depth throughout the presentation. This is just a really brief overview of topics that we'll be covering. So here's a list of the prime knots with a crossing number of 7 or lower. Remember that a prime knot simply means that the knot is non-trivial and is not a sum of two other non-trivial knots. Thus, these knots are really unique. Also, I would like to point out that there are several notations to use when discussing knots, but I chose Alexander Briggs because it is the most traditional and common notation. Each knot's notation consists of a number and a subscript. The number signifies the crossing number, and the subscript denotes its order among the knots with the same crossing number. The subscript value is arbitrary but unchanging, meaning the order has no special significance but is always the same. So anytime you see a list of the prime knots up to seven crossings in Alexander Briggs notation, it's going to be in the order of this image. Some of the most well-known knots are shown here. The unknot, which is just the loop. The trefoil, which is labeled as 3 subscript 1, the figure 8, which is labeled as 4 subscript 1, and the Solomon seal, which is labeled as 5 subscript 1. Now for activity, I'm going to show you how to easily make a trefoil knot, which is the simplest non-trivial knot. First, you're going to need a string or a rope. I have an old hair tie here that I cut. It's a little short, but it's it'll work. Um, okay, so then secondly, you tie an overhand knot, like a pretzel knot, just like this. And lastly, you join these two loose ends together. Imagine that they're fused together, and you have a trefoil knot. Yeah, so it's pretty easy, um, and it's really good to visualize exactly what it would look like. So the next thing we're going to look at is knot equivalence, which is essentially asking, how do you know if two knots are the same? And it's definitely more complicated than it looks. If you study the image at the bottom of this slide, 
you can clearly see that two knots that look completely different can actually end up being the exact same. The formal definition of knot equivalence is that two knots, K1 and K2, are equivalent if there is an orientation-preserving homomorphism, H, such that R3 to R3 with H acting on K1 equals K2. So basically, the most common method for determining knot equivalence is using Reidemeister moves, which I'll talk about on the next slide. So in 1927, Kurt Reidemeister discovered three moves that could be used to show knot equivalence. Basically, a sequence of any of these three moves um, can transform a knot to the diagram of its equivalent knot. So the three moves on the right of the slide, as you can see, the first one, R1, is known as like a loop. The second one is known as like a twist. And the last one is known as like a sliding move movement. So in a video that I'm going to show you next, you'll be able to see exactly how these Reidemeister moves are used. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, so I found this really nice summary video. It uses like a lot of the terms that I went over and I think it's really helpful. So I'm going to show it. I think I have enough time and it's pretty short. So yeah. When I say knots, what do you think? Boy Scouts? Sailing? Shoelaces? Well, there's also an entire subject in math devoted to knots. Knot theory, a part of the field of topology. Topology is like traditional Euclidean geometry, but with the rules bent a little. In topology, this is a circle, but this is also a circle, and this is one too. Objects can still be congruent after smooth deformations, stretching, bending, and twisting. What you can't do is break or glue. In knot theory, these circles are also projections of the unknot, the knot with zero crossings. One way we can distinguish knots is by their crossing number, the minimum possible number of crossings. This is a projection of the trefoil. Knot diagrams are called projections and are what the shadow would look like, but with the crossing shown. It's also called 3-1 because it is the first knot with a crossing number of 3. The trefoil is also the only unique knot with a crossing number of 3, but we need a proof. What about this knot? That would make two, right? How can we tell if they're the same? In 1927, Kurt Reidemeister developed the Reidemeister moves. Using the idea that you can stretch, bend, and twist, he identified three moves that can tangle or untangle knots. The first is a simple twist. The second is moving one string over or under another. And the final, most complicated move is to move a string over or under a crossing Using these moves, we can diagram a proof showing that the mystery knot is really a different projection of the trefoil. This is one pro possible proof. In knot diagrams, we have to note which moves we use, how many, and draw the projections after each change. We start with the mystery knot, moving the right string over with two type twos. Then we go over the crossings with three type threes, untwist the ends with two type twos, do one type one and a planar isotopy, the fancy term for its new deformation, and voila, the trefoil. While the crossing number and Reidemeister moves can make basic distinctions, more complex knots require alternative methods. Methods that can prove this knot and this knot are not the same, even though they have the same crossing number. Knots can be found in nature, in the structure of both DNA and the sense corona, but they also have potential technological applications. How about counterfeiting? Could we use knots to make money more secure? Some professors suggest that in the future, when quantum computers are more prevalent, quantum money will be encoded with knots. Instead of today's verification methods, an algorithm will check the knots on each virtual dollar and cent. Whereas calculus and geometry are over 2,000 years old, knot theory is less than 200. With so many unanswered questions, instead of pondering why you should explore knot theory, ask yourself, why not? So I hope you enjoyed that video. It gets a little punny, but um, I think it does a really good job of kind of summarizing everything we covered today. And it also gets a little complicated in the end when it starts talking about some of the applications, but you can just kind of ignore that part for now. So that's it for my presentation. Um, I hope you learned a lot and thank you for listening.